Hey guys, um, it's Dark Room 35 here, and today I'm bringing you another video on how to configure the PlayStation 1 ESP, oh no, EPSXE um, emulator, and um, I haven't uploaded in quite a bit. It's because, um, yeah, I mean, Hold on, let me back up a little bit. Happy New Year's, guys. Happy freaking New Year's. Anyways, I'll get to the talk at the end of this video. Um, what first you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download ESP, E-P-S-X-E, and from anywhere, really, you just need to get your hands on it. And basically, you're going to want it, once you've downloaded it, it does require an ISO, actually. Right here, see, I've got all this, all these games. Um, here, I'm gonna delete this one because I don't need this one. Um, I got Spire the Dragon. You already know what it is. Okay, so once we've done this, once we've got our ISOs, we can go over here to ESPXE. Now, what I'm gonna be showing you how to fix is the black screens. The black screens are very annoying. When I first downloaded this. And I opened it up and I configured it for the first time. It did not work. It got black screens and everything. I'm going to be showing you how to fix that. And probably any other problems that you may encounter. First thing we're going to want to do is basically once you've... The first thing you want, you've installed. Like as soon as you've installed it, the wizard guide should pop up like this. It should look something like this. You just want to go config. If... Oh yeah. You have to download a BIOS. The HLE BIOS does not work. I've tried it. It does not work. You want to get the SCPH1001 US. And you can download it from Cool Roms. And they have, they have all that stuff there. Um, I'm not sure. You, it depends on what BIOS. This BIOS usually works. It, they say any, any BIOS. Um, see, it's on the... Yep. You want to you want to use this one. Yep, that's that's the one you want to use. SCPH one zero zero one. You download that. You get your hands on it pretty easily. And it says configuring for the video. You want to use Pete's OpenGL two GPU core two point zero point zero. You want to use that. And because if you don't, if you use this, it'll use the actual ESPXE's core, their actual thing. It doesn't really work as well. That's why I use Pete's. Um, plus, I've tried it on there. It doesn't work. And also, here, you can use the EPSXE core if you're using a software accurate render. And the Loopy Guide, they don't have it here. The Loopy Glide, you can download from the internet. And um, if you're using an Intel integrated computer like I am, because mine's kind of shit, and what you're going to want to do is just click Pete's, Pete's um, GL2 core. And you want to use the only one here, it's the SPU core, for, I think, the audio. Oh, yeah, the audio. Now, for the CD-ROM, you want to use the second one, the WNT. That's for if you're using anything from XP or later, from Windows XP or later. It could be Windows Vista. Anything from Vista or later, you want to use this, this one. If you're using anything before v Vista or XP, if anything before Vista, you want to use th this one, or before XP, you, you want to use the, the, the first one. Now once you've done this, you can go in here, and for the controllers, um, you want to use controller 1, because that's the one that um, the ESPXE recognizes, it only like renders this one, it only uses this one right here it only uses this one. It does not recognize this one. If you configure it on this one, it will not work. You can probably configure it yourself on how to use it with here on your second controller. If you want to use your keyboard and your controller, in case you've misplaced your controller. Anyways, let's can if you configure your 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 controller, um, you can use it wirelessly. I'll be showing you how to connect that later in the video. Um, you can, it's pretty simple to set this thing up. You just find the buttons for like L2, you want to use LT. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now here you want to use direct input. 
And for for this, you want to use dual analog. This is extremely crucial in order for controller to work. And here, you want to use type DX Joy One for your rumble, or and you, for motors, you want to use sine and sine. Um, you could use joystick one. It vibrates your controller. If I think I'm not I'm not sure too sure about the rumble feature. You could do this, but I'm recommending that you use this. You could try something else if it doesn't work for you. It's completely up to you if you don't want rumble or not. It's a PS1 game. It's not really based on accuracy, and I don't think the online feature works, so it doesn't really matter if you use rumble or not. Anyways, um, once you've configured your shit, you're basically done. And this is done. Now, once you've done this, you want to go to... Oh, yeah, this is extremely crucial. This is what causes the black screen in some cases. you it, it, it This should be all dimmed out if you're running my version. You want to use... It, it should have... It sh, it's set on 5 as soon as you download it. You want to download it and put it on 1. You want to put it on 1. Very extremely crucial. Everything else you can just leave alone. Everything you can just leave alone. And UI language, just use default. Default is English. So you don't want to mess with that. Sometimes it doesn't work. Anyways, once we've done this, we want to go to video. And you're using the Pete, as I said before. Um, you're going to want to use... You want to go to full screen and desktop resolution. You want to set to whatever is closest to your desktop resolution. Mine's 1366 by 768 meters in area. I mean, not meters, sorry, centimeters in area, surface area of my screen. And you want to use color depth 32 bit. It depends on what kind of PC you're using. If you're using an old computer from like the 90s, you. You, whatever, dude, just use 32 bit. That's what I'm using. M Windows 10, just use 32 bit. Anyways, for stretching mode and render mode, this is extremely crucial. You want to set both of these to 1. Render to PB buffer, copy to texture, supported by most cards. Scale to window size, keep aspect ratio. Some people are using NVIDIA cards. That doesn't really make a difference. You just want to use Pete's GL2 core. And once you've done this, you don't want to mess with anything else. You could probably mess with this. Which is will happen. This is the. Yep, yeah, you can just. I leave this alone because sometimes it messes with the textures, and my textures are perfectly fine how I'm playing my games. FPS limit? You can limit that to 20, two, 200. Because if you set the cap off, if you don't have a cap on, it will lag because of too much FPS. PS1 games were not meant to go over 60 frames. So make sure you don't have V-Sync on, because V-Sync will cause it to not work, just as Halo 2. Um, once you've done everything, you want to click OK, and I believe that is pretty much it. Oh, also, to run a game, you want to go to File, Run ISO, and you can pick your game from here, and it should work. Um, I can't click on this game because my recorder will black out and the whole screen will black out. That's what happened the first time I recorded this. So, basically, you want to load up your game. It should work. If it doesn't work, contact me by YouTube via, via YouTube comments. And that's pretty much it. And once you've done that, you just click... I'm going to click cancel because I'm not going to run a game. Now we've configured everything. And to connect your Xbox One controller... I figured out how to do these things. <laughs> okay, let's say you're connecting for the very first time. Like, very first time, right? I'm gonna remove this. Let's say you're connecting for the very first time. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna disconnect. I'm gonna remove the device from my computer. Forget about it, you know what I mean? Alright, so I finally... I got my Xbox One controller right here, in my left hand. Oh, also, note, I'm not too sure about the original Xbox One controllers. I'm not sure if they have the Bluetooth feature allowed. Um, most newer controllers, the newer 1X controllers that came along at the same time that 1X came out, the 1S, those controllers, I'm pretty sure you have the Bluetooth feature for wireless gameplay, so you don't need the wireless adapter. If you're using the older one, I'm pretty sure you need to use the wireless adapter. 
So once you've done that, you add Bluetooth. You don't want to click everything else because the computer will not recognize it, even though it says Xbox controllers. You want to make sure it's on Bluetooth because the controllers, the new controllers run with Bluetooth. So this is add a device. So on, on your controller, you're going to want to turn it on. You just want to hold down the button. Make sure it's not connected to your Xbox because if it is, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you turn on your controller. Make sure it's on and it's blinking or... If it, it should be solid, a solid, if you're connected to your Xbox, it should be a solid light coming out of your, the, the, the home button, whatever it is. Now, above your home button, should you should look where the charger port is, and above, right above it is a little tiny button. It, you should have three lines next to it, it's not really tiny, but it's, you want to click on it, you want, you want to push it down, right? And your controller will start blinking. See, as soon as I pressed it, it's found it. The computer's found it, it's recognized it, and knows, it knows what it is. So once it's found it, you want to click on it, and it's going to be connecting it. Once it's connected, it says your device is ready to go, it's going to set it up, it's going to download all the drivers from Windows. The Windows computer, Windows 10, has Microsoft has implemented it into your computer as your OS. You, it says you're setting up your Xbox controller, that's for your first time, and your device is ready to go, it's done. All right, you. I'm not sure if it'll work. Oh, yep, it works. It, it'll recognize everything for all your everything. So we've done that. We're just gonna wait for this to be done. I'm gonna showing you how to, because sometimes you have to switch from both things um, every time. Like if you, let's say you only have one controller, you don't have two controllers. You can just use one controller. It doesn't you don't need to have two controllers. Um, you just press the little button on the top above the charging port and it'll start blinking and What happens is um, if you connect it to your Xbox and you try to connect it to your computer It will not work just like that. You have to press the button so it can pair So once you've paired it Sometimes it says you can turn on Bluetooth even even faster It's because sometimes people don't know how to do that. I'm gonna be showing you how to do that and you, if you don't know how to do it, you can just, you'd have to remove it every time, you'd have to remove the device, wait for it to set up, and all, and all that stuff, it's a mess, right, you don't want to do that, you want to be quick, let's say you're on a time crunch or whatever, you, you want to be quick, you want to, you want to be quick, you want to get into your game fast, so, what you want to do is just, um, once you've, once you, let's say you just got off your Xbox and you want to go on your computer and play some games, so what you're going to do, it should be a solid color just from when you were connected to your Xbox. You want to press the button, you start blinking, and, um, well, that's the, that's the calendar. Um, it should say right here, it's start blinking. You're going to want to click this little notification thing right here. And now once it starts blinking, once it starts blinking, it should say Xbox wireless controller. You want to click that off, you want to click that back on. And then I'm pretty sure. It'll, yep, there we go. It works. Yep. It, so it's it's a lot faster. It's a lot faster. So yep, that's pretty much how you do it really fast. It's how you configure it. If and if you guys have any problems with your your um, PSX, your emulator, if you have any problems, contact me via YouTube comments comments. And um, that's pretty much it for this video. It's already pretty lengthy because this does contain a lot of information and. Oh yeah, quick little side note. Um, my 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 birthday is on February third, the day after Groundhog's Day. So if you guys wanna celebrate my birthday, you know what it is, right? I've I've told you guys. If you've made it to the end of this video, some people's attention span is not as fast as others, or long as others. Mine's pretty long. Uh, actually, four minutes, and then it starts to be oh, smart. Alright, anyways, if I'm reading... Anyways, oh, I'm getting way off topic. Alright, so, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed. Hopefully this fix has fixed your problem. And, um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, everybody. And I'm signing off.